The war of words between the U.S. and North Korea is continuing to heat up. This time, the North Korean foreign minister accused the American president of tweeting a declaration of war against Pyongyang over the weekend. The White House called that allegation absurd. North Korean Foreign Minister Lee Yong-ho told reporters his country had the right to use countermeasures against the U.S., including shooting down its planes. Lee was reacting to a Saturday tweet from Trump. In it, Trump said if Lee echoes leader Kim Jong-un, who he called Little Rocket Man, the country's leadership won't be around much longer. Lee said that was a declaration of war. From now on, Pyongyang has every self-defensive right to take countermeasures, including the right to shoot down U.S. strategic bombers any time, even when they are not in North Korea's airspace. The U.S. flew warplanes over waters in international airspace east of North Korea on Saturday. A White House spokesperson denied Trump's tweet was a war declaration. We've not declared war on North Korea, uh, and frankly, the suggestion of that is absurd. She said the U.S. will continue to seek the peaceful denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula through maximum economic and diplomatic pressures. A U.N. spokesperson reiterated the Secretary General's call for a political solution. Last week, Trump threatened to totally destroy North Korea if necessary in his first U.N. General Assembly speech. Kim responded in a statement by calling Trump mentally deranged. The Trump administration says North Korea's claim that the U.S. has declared war is absurd and that it's still seeking a peaceful resolution of the tensions. North Korea's foreign minister had said President Trump's harsh words gave it the right to shoot down American planes. Connie Kim has the latest on Pyongyang and Washington's war of words. The verbal exchange between the U.S. and North Korea has reached a new high with North Korea's foreign minister accusing U.S. President Donald Trump of declaring war on the regime during a rare press conference in New York on Monday local time. Trump ultimately declared war on us last weekend by claiming again that our leadership won't be around much longer. Given that this comes from an incumbent American president, this is clearly a declaration of war. Lee Yong hos statement took aim at Trump's tweet message that came following his speech at the UN. The North Korean diplomat also warned of taking countermeasures coming on the heels of Washington's disclosure that its B-1B bombers flew just off North Korea's coast. Since the U.S. has clearly declared war on us, we have every right to take countermeasures. That includes the right to shoot down their strategic bombers at a time of our discretion, even if they're not in our airspace. We will see then who lasts longer. The ongoing war of words does not seem to be reaching a conclusion anytime soon, and concerns are rising of additional provocations by North Korea. In that regard, I would say that uh, North Korea is probably uh, thinking carefully about what next step to take. North Korea will have to calibrate very carefully not to uh, overstep the red line that could be uh, bring uh, invite. Uh, United American retaliation against North Korea. Some experts are pointing at a possible test launch of an ICBM as Pyongyang's next provocation. But whether the regime will go as far as detonating a nuclear tipped missile over the Pacific Ocean, an option at least that Kim Jong un was considering, is yet to be seen as a possibility, for the stakes may be too high for the reclusive regime. In Cambodia, people are celebrating completion of the country's largest hydro, hydropower dam. A consortium led by a Chinese firm built the dam in a northeastern province of the country, financing most of the $800 million project. Cambodia's prime minister thanked China for its support at the ceremony, adding that most hydropower dams in the country have been built with Chinese investment. <laughs> I would like to take this opportunity to express my appreciation for the support of the government of the People's Republic of China. 
Hun Sen applauded increasing electricity supplies for people in Cambodia over the past decade. The country's economy is experiencing growth of more than 7% a year. But not everyone is happy with the project. Some people were forced to relocate to a new village. They previously told NHK that they were dissatisfied with soil conditions and wells in the area. In the U.S., politics and emails are back in the spotlight. And this time, it involves some of the people closest to Donald Trump. U.S. media report at least six aides to the president used private emails for government business, including his daughter and son-in-law. On Monday, the New York Times reported former chief strategist Steve Bannon and former chief of staff Reince Priebus did the same. Newsweek reported Trump's daughter Ivanka also used a personal email address after her father took office. Earlier, it was revealed Trump's son-in-law and senior White House advisor Jared Kushner exchanged nearly 100 emails on official matters through his private account. Details of emails exchanged by Trump's aides were not immediately available, but the revelations could invite backlash from the Democratic Party. The use of private email was a focal point in last year's U.S. presidential election. Trump's campaign attacked his Democratic rival Hillary Clinton for her use of, pri of a private email server while she was Secretary of State, leading campaign rallies in chance of lock her up. Clinton later blamed her election loss on the FBI's decision to reopen its inquiry into the case. The latest revelation comes as a special investigation into Russian meddling into the U.S. election continues to dog the Trump administration. I watched a little bit and I will say that there was tremendous solidarity for our flag and for our country. President, your friend Robert Kraft said he was disappointed by what you said on Friday. Well, that's okay. Look, he's got to take his... He has to take his ideas and go with what he wants. I think it's very disrespectful to our country. I think it's very, very disrespectful to our flag. I like Bob very much. He's my friend, but he gave me a Super Bowl ring a month ago, right? So he's a good friend of mine, but, uh, and I want him to do what he wants to do, but we have a great country. We have great people representing our country, especially our soldiers, our first responders, and they should be treated with respect. And when you get on your knee, and you don't respect the American flag or the anthem, that's not being treated with respect. Are you still claiming racial tensions, No, this has nothing to do with race. I've never said anything about race. This has nothing to do with race or anything else. This has to do with respect for our country and respect for our flag. We will see a horrible loss of human life. Probably 300 to 400,000 in the first week civilian and military, probably over two million by the time three weeks is up. If I'm a North Korean commander, I will unleash the firepower of my artillery and inflict as much death and destruction on the South as I can. And in the first hours, there will literally be hundreds of thousands of artillery rounds and rockets fired to the South, and many of them into Seoul. With their reserve forces of some six million, I think they're the fourth largest army in the world. The scenarios that could lead to war is when Kim Jong-un believes he is threatened. And this can be an external threat by a preemptive strike from the United States, by a miscalculation of alliance military moves where he thinks the regime is subject to extreme threat. Our task will be to use air power to hold those guys off as much as we can until we can get heavier stuff in there. The first thing you've got to do is to get all your stuff combat loaded on ships. Tanks, trucks, armor, artillery, infantry, all the stuff that goes with that. And that will take anywhere from three or four days for the U.S. Marine Corps guys coming in out of Japan to almost three weeks for the heavy tanks to come in all the way from Texas. The North Koreans have about two to three weeks of stocks, ammunition, food, fuel, etc. to fight a war. That's all they got. So their war plan has to include accomplishing all of the goals that they have within that short time frame. Because after that, they're living off the land. 
as the war starts to go bad for them, most units will start to collapse. Once their army starts to collapse, it's going to be a very, very rapid de